Hi everyone! In this video we're going to go over some of the major parts that we cover in exercise 17, the gross anatomy of the brain and cranial nerves. We're going to start by looking at the major structures of the brain. So most of us are familiar with the cerebrum. This is what we often see when we think about the brain um, and this little walnut, half walnut area that's called the cerebellum. So again, this is the cerebrum up here, and this is the cerebellum. The cerebrum is divided into different lobes. We have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. Okay. Within these lobes, we see bumps. And so this is a, just a little section taken out of this area. And the bumps are called a gyrus or gyri. Um, and we also see kind of crevices. And if it's a shallow crevice, it's called a sulcus. And if it's a deep crevice, it's called a fissure. Okay. So we're going to go through some of the major sulc um, sulcuses, sulci. <laughs> Not sure what the plural is for that. But we're going to go through some of the major um, sulcuses right now. Um, and talk about how they divide the brain into different regions. So first we're going to look at the central sulcus. And so the central sulcus is a crevice that divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. Just in front of the central sulcus is a gyrus. And this gyrus is called the precentral gyrus. Behind the central sulcus is the postcentral gyrus. Now this is the anatomical term for this area, or for these areas. Um, the physiological terms that we call these areas, this is the primary motor cortex, and this area right here is called the somatosensory cortex. So when we're in lab and I'm asking you for the name of this structure, I want to see the precentral gyrus, which is the structural term, not the functional term. Okay. Um, we have another sulcus over here that divides the frontal and parietal lobes from the temporal lobe. And so this is the lateral sulcus. Okay. And then separating the cerebrum from the cerebellum, we have the transverse cerebral fissure. Um, one more thing I should talk about before we go to the next slide is when we look at a cross section of the brain, the outer layer, is, which is pretty thin, is made out of gray matter, and the inner layer is made out of white matter. When we see gray matter, I want you to think cell bodies. That's the majority of what we find in gray matter, are the cell bodies of neurons. The white matter is where we find axons, myelinated and unmyelinated axons that are sending information either to different hemispheres or down to the spinal cord. Um, so there's lots and lots of communication wires within our brain. Here's a superior view of the brain, and there's one more fissure I would like to talk about, and this is the longitudinal fissure. And the longitudinal fissure divides the brain into left and right hemispheres. And so here we have a preserved brain, and we can see that nice longitudinal fissure here as well. Next, we have an inferior view of the brain. And I'm going to mostly stay away from the cranial nerves, which are all these kind of little stringy things coming off. We'll talk about those a little bit later on in the slideshow. Um, I want to kind of take your attention to this olfactory bulb. Okay, so the olfactory bulb is attached to the olfactory tract. Um, and the olfactory bulb is an area where there's a bunch of chemoceptors. And that bulb is actually found at the very back of your nose, okay? So this bulb is not part of your brain. It's kind of a sensory receptor for chemicals that you're inhaling. Behind the olfactory bulb and olfactory tract, we see this X right here. And this X is the optic chiasma. Optic means something to do with the eyes, and so, and chiasma means a cross or an X. Um, just a little bit behind that optic chiasma, we see a little stem here, and this stem is where the pituitary gland hangs off the brain. 
Um, and so the stem is called the infundibulum. A little bit more posterior, we have these two bumps, and these two bumps are called the mammillary bodies. This whole area right here forms what we call the midbrain, and that's the first part of the brainstem proper. So here's the midbrain, here's the pons, and here's the medulla oblongata. So these three parts, midbrain, pons, and abdulla oblongata, uh, sorry, medulla oblongata, uh, form the midbrain. Now we're looking at a, a mid-sagittal section of the brain. Um, and there's lots and lots of really important structures here. I'm going to start looking at this white matter right here. This white matter is called the corpus callosum, and it's made out of axons that communicate between the right and left hemispheres. So this wet, white matter is really, really important, right? It's really important that our right and left hemispheres are in constant communication. Um, below that, we have the fornix, okay? So we have the corpus callosum, and we have the fornix. We're going to spend some time now looking at the different ventricles of the brain. And so the ventricles are where the cerebral spinal fluid is produced and where it kind of travels through the brain. So here is one ventricle. Again, it's made out of the corpus callosum and the fornix. Um, and this ventricle is called the lateral ventricle. And so there's one on both the right and left sides. Um, separating those two ventricles is a wall called the septum pellucidum. Septum pellucidum. Um, below that, we have this area right here, and it's actually made of the walls of um, a region called the hypothalamus. But the two walls of the hypothalamus make the third ventricle. So the cerebral spinal fluid is going to travel through here, through here, and then it's going to come down this tube. And this tube right here is called the cerebral aqueduct, and it's going to go into the fourth ventricle. And we'll talk more about circulation with, of cerebral spinal fluid a little bit later in this slideshow. Okay. Um, we're going to look at the three um, thalmic Regions. So I mentioned the hypothalamus already. The hypothalamus is really important in its um, connection to the endocrine system. We also have the thalamus right here, and we have the epithalamus. And the epithalamus is, includes the pineal gland back here. Just a few more structures to talk about before we go to the next slide. So here is a cerebellum, and when you cut open the cerebellum, you see on the inside it looks like a tree. And so this tree is named the tree of life, um, but it's tree of life in Latin, so it's arbor vitae. Um, and on the other side, on the anterior side, we see the pons and we see the medulla oblongata. Now here is an illustration of the same um, section of the brain. And I just want you to look at this because it kind of is nice to see it in color. Um, and I'm just going to highlight a few of the structures. So here we can see that hypothalamus forming the walls of the third ventricle. Um, but we can also see how that pituitary gland is attached to the hypothalamus through that structure called the infundibulum. Okay, we can see the thalamus, but we can also see that there's a little kind of um, a little shape, a little oval shape inside the thalamus, and that's called the interthalamic adhesion or the intermediate mass of the thalamus. Okay, up here we see these capillary beds, and these capillary beds actually kind of exist, kind of lining through the lateral ventricles lining the third ventricle, lining the fourth ventricle. And they're called the choroid plexus. And these capillary beds are where that cerebral spinal fluid comes from. So I talk about in lecture how that cerebral spinal fluid is formed. Um, but I want you to know that the cerebral spinal fluid is coming from blood that is taken to the choroid plexuses. Okay, 
And so it's not, the cerebral spinal fluid is made out of the plasma of blood. It's kind of, there's, it's kind of like plasma plus. Um, and we get into those details in lectures. Just want you to kind of have that understanding as we're going forward. This view of the brain um, allows us to see some of the kind of deep nuclei. So a nuclei is a mass of neuron cell bodies. We refer to it as a ganglia when it's in the peripheral nervous system, but they are a nucleus or nuclei in the central nervous system. And so we can see some of those kind of deep nuclei. We can also see the true structure of the thalamus. We can see the ventricles a little bit better, those lateral ventricles separated by that septum pellucidum. So the brain has three meninges, and so meninges are just coverings of the brain. Um, and so they're all called the mothers of the brain. There's the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. So we're going to start with the outermost meninge, the dura mater. Dura means tough, okay? And so that dura mater is this outermost meninge that really protects the brain. The next meninge is the arachnoid mater, okay? And that arachnoid means spidery. Um, and so the arachnoid mater, mater really looks like there's spider webs kind of incorporated into it. Okay, um, and then we have the pia mater, and the pia mater is kind of the outermost layer of the brain. Um, it's a very thin layer, and pia means soft. So we have the tough mother, the spidery mother, and the soft mother. Um, we can see that underneath the arachnoid mater, we see blood vessels, and we see space um, for fluid to travel. So this area right here is called the subdural, sorry, the subarachnoid space. Um, we also have the subdural space, and the subdural space is found between the arachnoid mater and the dura mater. I had mentioned that we were going to look at the ventricles again, and so here is a different view of the lateral ventricles, I'm sorry, of all the ventricles. We have the lateral ventricles here, we have the third ventricle right here, the cerebral aqueduct leading to the fourth ventricle right here. Um, and so you can see how they kind of are oriented in space. Here's another view of those ventricles. So you can see the lateral ventricles really clearly here. That third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct leading to the fourth ventricle. Now this picture shows you how that cerebral spinal fluid kind of travels around the brain. And so we can see these drawings of the choroid plexuses where the plasma is forced out and modified into cerebral spinal fluid. It's gonna travel around the lateral ventricles, around the third ventricles, down the cerebral aqueduct, into the fourth ventricle, down the central canal of the spinal cord, up and around the brain, kind of just traveling all over. And so this is not like the bloodstream, like the bloodstream has a very specific directional path that it takes. Um, cerebral spinal fluid is more of, you know, current. So, you know, most of the fluid's going to um, kind of flow around the brain right here. Not all though. So again, um, this is just the general pattern. It's not set in stone. There aren't blood vessels that the cerebral spinal fluid travels through. So we've made it through all of the brain structures that I'm going to expect you to know for um, the next quiz. Um, in addition to these brain structures, I want you to be able to identify the majority of these things on your sheep brain. So your brain quiz will include both illustrations and pictures of a human brain and illustrations and pictures of a sheep brain, okay? In addition to those, um, the human brain and the sheep brain, the last thing that you need to know about are the cranial nerves. So the cranial nerves are the nerves that come directly off the brain, okay? And um, if you look at your most important points, you need to know the names of the cranial nerves, the numbers of the cranial nerves, whether they are motor, sensory, or both, and 
kind of a general idea of their function. And some of their names give you their function. Sometimes you have to tease it out a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to share w any of them with you, but if you, you know, search for uh, mnemonic devices for learning the cranial nerves, you're going to find plenty of them on the internet. So if you are somebody who is helped by, say, a sentence where the first letter starts with the first letter of the cranial nerves, um, just search for mnemonic, um, P-N-E-U-M-O-N-I-C, uh, mnemonic um, cranial nerves, and you'll get a bunch of them. Um, I am going to tell you how I study the cranial nerves. Okay, so the first three cranial nerves all start with O. So I always think ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so we've already talked about the olfactory bulb. So here's the olfactory bulb, the olfactory tract, and this whole structure is considered the olfactory no, sorry, in fact, <laughs> olfactory nerve. Um, so that's cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve. The next nerve we have is the optic nerve. And we talked about the optic chiasma. And so here are the optic nerves. And the optic nerves are actually attached to our eyeballs. Okay, and at the optic chiasma, that is where the information coming from our eye, going to our brain, crosses over to the opposite hemisphere. So pretend our eyes here, that optic nerve crosses over and goes to the optic, sorry, the opposite hemisphere. Okay, the third cranial nerve is the oculomotor nerve. Now, you might not know much about the name oculomotor, but oculo, you might think ocular lens of a microscope, that's where you look through your eye. So this has something to do with eye, and it's a motor neuron, so it's controlling muscle. So oculomotor nerve, and this is the third cranial nerve. Okay, so the next set of three is TTA. So ooh, 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 TTA. Um, so we have the trochlear nerve, which is nerve four, the trigeminal nerve, nerve five, and the abducens nerve, which is nerve six. Okay, so trochlea means pulley. Um, and so the trochlear nerve is going to control this single muscle that's involved in eye movement. And it kind of has a orientation that's like a pulley. The trigeminal nerve, tri means three, geminal means twins. And so the trigeminal nerve is this nerve that has three major branches going out to your face. So one goes over your eye, one goes over your mouth, and one goes under your mouth. Um, it's important to know about a condition called trigeminal neuralgia when we're talking about cranial nerves. Trigeminal neuralgia is a condition where people experience extreme pain in, the, in one or more branches of the trigeminal nerve. Um, and fortunately now there is um, surgery that is very effective in the majority of cases, but for a long time there was virtually nothing that we could do for people with trigeminal neuralgia and it was just a totally debilitating condition. The last of these, this group of three is the abducens nerve. And so the abducens nerve is going to abduct. So, when, so um, there's adduct and abduct. Abducting is moving away, and so the abducens nerve, so the abducens nerve allows our eye to move towards the peripheral edges. So that's just going to allow us to look on either side of our face. Okay, so that's what the abducens nerve does. Our next group of three is FVG, FVG. So F is for the facial nerve right here. And so we see that it has a couple roots down here. So this is the facial nerve. And the facial nerve is um, deals with kind of controlling the muscles that make our face make different expressions, um, taste, um, tears, and saliva production. So that's the facial nerve or nerve seven. Um, 
so I said FVG. So V is the vestibulocochlear nerve. Um, and so this, so the vestibulo is, has to do with balance. Cochlear has to do with ear. So this nerve is involved in hearing and sense of balance. Um, and then the last but not least of this group of three is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Um, and so glossal means tongue. Uh, pharyngeal is talking about the pharynx or the opening in the back of your nose and your mouth. Um, and so this nerve is going to innervate those areas. So um, involved with taste, with pressure reception, with chemical reception, um, and a little bit of uh, salivary gland action as well. Okay, the final group of three, V, A, H. So V is for the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is so important. Um, the vagus nerve controls our gut, so our intestines and stomach. Um, it also is involved with controlling our heart rate, sorry, heart rate. Um, and it is involved with um, sensation in the larynx and the pharynx. The accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11. So here's that accessory nerve right here. Um, the accessory nerve is involved with innervating the shoulder and neck muscles. And the last of the cranial nerves, the hypoglossal nerve. Hypo means blow, glossal means tongue. And this hypoglossal nerve is involved in the movements of the tongue. So I'm just going to go through those groups of three once again. So we have oo oo olfactory, optic, oculomotor. We have T T A, trochlea, trochlear I should say, trigeminal abducens. We have F V G, face facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, and then we have V A H, vagus accessory hypoglossal. Okay, so make sure you know those and again, know whether they're sensory, motor, or both and know their major functions. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, please post to the community help form if you have any questions and I'll see you soon.